Hey there everybody, welcome back. All right, so this will be the first video on torque. And so, because it's the first one, I wanna start out with a fairly simple example, all right? What we have here is basically someone walking, right? And so, when you walk, whether you realize it or not, your heel rotates, right? It rotates about the ankle joint. And you basically walk, uh, because your leg muscles are pulling your heel upwards, right? And then your happens to your other foot, this ankle joint rotates back the other way, then you, you repeat the process, right? So as you walk about this point right here, your ankle joint, your foot and leg rotate. The Achilles connects your heel to your leg muscle, all right? So there's a force pulling your heel upwards, as shown here, right? So we have the magnitude of that force as just a given 720 newtons. And in this example, we want to find the torque generated by that tendon on the heel or on that foot, okay? So in this case, the axis of rotation is the ankle joint right there. We're given a distance from the ankle joint to the heel or where that uh, Achilles connects, that distance there is 0 0.036 meters, all right? So we can find the torque one of three different ways. So I've, I've, I, I have here kind of a free body diagram like drawing of the situation. So keep in mind, the force vector is shown in blue. The, the, the lever arm, or in other words, the R vector, right, the distance from the axis to where the force is applied is right here. That's R, right, or R, the vector. So in the torque, that's the R, and we'll cross that with F, okay? So remember, torque is a vector, um, and that's R vector crossed with the force the vector, right? Um, by the way, I, I realize that's a scribbly torque. Whoa, there we go. But remember, torque is denoted as kind of a script, capital T. It's called tau. It's Greek letter tau. It's not T, necessarily. It's tau. T-A-U. Right? Tau. And that's defined as the torque, which is R cross F. Remember back when we did cross products, the magnitude of this is equal to the magnitude of the first vector times the magnitude of the second vector times sine of the angle in between R and F, okay? So keeping this in mind, let me go to the next page and we'll solve it each of the three ways, okay? So I ha have the picture recreated here. So method number one. All right, so we'll do that. Method number one, let's just simply use the magnitude of torque. All right, so let's see. Um, yeah, the magnitude of torque is equal to R, F, sine, theta, okay? So if we have, let me do it in red. If we have R is right there. Okay, we have F. I'm going to translate that R vector out such that the two are tail to tail. So let me do that kind of over here. So that's there, that's there. So instead of R being here, I'm going to put R out here. And the force is still in its direction. Okay. Now we're shown that angle right there is 55. So in other words, that's the perpendicular. So this is the 55 degrees. The angle in the magnitude here, that's the angle in between R and F. So that's right there. We got to figure out what that is. So that's theta. How do we do that? Well, that's a right angle, right? So this leftover interior angle is 180 minus 90 minus 55 
should be 35 degrees. And then this flat line here is 180. 180 minus 35 is 145. Okay, and so this torque is now the magnitude of R, which is 0 0.036 meters, of course, times the force, 720, times sine of 145 in degrees, right? And we should get a magnitude of 14.6 Newton meters, right? Now, that's the magnitude of torque, 14.6. However, which way is this Achilles, or which way is the heel rotating about the axis? Right, the actual direction is this way, right, as you walk. The heel comes up, so it rotates clockwise around the ankle joint. And torque is defined as clockwise means plus, so, sorry, I got ahead of myself. Clockwise means it's a negative torque. Counterclockwise means it's a positive torque. Don't ask me why. It's another one of those archaic um, conventions that have just stuck, okay? So by convention, which means it's just been agreed upon and textbooks have uh, pro proliferated it. Um, clockwise is negative torque, counterclockwise is positive. So this means that that's a negative 14.6 Newton meter torque. That's method number one, okay? Just put the vectors tail to tail, find the angle in between, take the magnitude. Method number two, let's see, we can, we need to get R and F, right? either of their components to be perpendicular, okay? Either one. So remember, R cross F is torque. So tell you what, let's do it this way. Let's uh, get the R vector, right? The lever arm to be perpendicular to the force. So that means I'm gonna put, there's the heel, Here's my ankle joint. This is our original radius. And here's the force. And this perpendicular line I'm leaving there such that this here is 55 degrees. Now, I want to find the perpendicular component of R to F. Right? In other words, I want to find this. Right? And well, if we know that 55 degrees, that's the cosine. So this here is R cosine of 55. That's equal to what we can call as R perpendicular. Okay? So in the torque expression, that's what we put. We want the R perpendicular to F. Actually, let me put it like this. We can put R perpendicular crossed with F. Okay? In this case, R perpendicular right here is already perpendicular to F. So when we evaluate the magnitude of this cross product, we'll have sine of 90, something like this. The magnitude is R perpendicular, magnitude of F is F for right now, and then sine of the angle in between, well, in between that one and F, that's a right angle. So in this case, we have sine of 90, okay? Slightly different from case number one, but if it's easier for you to picture it this way, by all means, use this. Okay, so now we plug in the expression of R cosine 55 times the magnitude, well, I, I should have just put in the value, times the magnitude of force. Yeah, let me just do that. Um, 
0.036 cosine 55, right? That's r perpendicular times 720 times sine of 90. Well, that's just 1, right? And if you do this, right, I encourage you to actually punch this in, into your calculator to show yourself that you get the exact same magnitude as up there, okay? And again, it's up to you to realize that the rotational direction is clockwise. So thus, it's up to you to put in a negative. Okay, if you just do this calculation, you'll get positive 14.6. So it's up to you to put in that negative because it's a clockwise rotation, All right? So that's method number two. Method number three to get this torque is, well, we use the perpendicular component of R for number two. Let's use the perpendicular component of F. So we have R cross F perpendicular. Well, in this case, uh, let's see, do I have more, more room? I'm going to try and squeeze it somewhere. Which was better? I'm going to do it over here. Okay, so that's R. And now F used to be, or actually is, that direction, right? But we want F perpendicular. And that's the perpendicular component to R. So in other words, you can use this, or you can use this one, right? Both the same vector. So this is F perpendicular, just like this is. So now, writing in that angle, like we have in the problem, right, that's perpendicular, this angle here is the 55. Well, hmm, how do we get an expression for F perpendicular? Um, we'd need to know this angle here because this would be the sine of that angle, right? Or if you wanted to find this angle, it would be the cosine, right? So I'll tell you what, let's... Uh, Let's do that. So that's 90, 55. We said this was 35 degrees. So that would make this uh, 55 as well. It sounds about right. 90 minus 35, yeah. So whichever angle you'd like to use, it's up to you. I'm going to say that that is the magnitude of F times sine 35, right? And so when we plug it into our torque equation, we have the magnitude of R is R and F perpendicular, right that. And again, the angle in between R and F now, R and F perpendicular, that's 90. So like in number two, we have sine of 90 again. Okay. So... The magnitude here is 0.036. F perpendicular is 720 times sine 35. And then sine 90 is 1. Okay. And so this, again, should be 14.6. And it's up to you to put in the sine, so negative 14.6 newton meters you're encouraged to actually plug these different numbers into your calculator to show you that it's also 14.6 Newton meters, okay? So we've done it three different ways. In, way, in, in method number one, we kept both R and F as their regular um, forces, the regular magnitudes. We did not break them up into components. I simply translated this R over here and found the angle in, in between right? Method number two, I found the perpendicular component of R to F, all right? And I, there was, I used cosine of 55 in that case. Um, and for method number three, I found the perpendicular component of the force 
to R, okay? And for that one, I use sine 35. Whichever way makes sense the most in your head, by all means, stick with that, okay? Because it, the torque should be the same process, regardless of whatever problem situation you have, okay? All right, thanks for watching.